that like I, in my research, I learned that Skid Row was almost called Skid Marks. <laughs> is, that, is that true? Well, I mean, people probably called us that anyway. Well, <laughs> well, no, well, but they said they said that the, the band was not named after the homeless encampment in Los Angeles, but rather you guys were in a car and there was like a near accident or something and like the car, like a car went like and left skid marks on, and then someone in the like saw it and said, oh, we'll call ourselves skid marks. That's not, and, not true. Okay, not true. well, there we go. That is no. not true. We have, we have busted the myth. Do you have a Bahamanian citizenship? Bahamian. Bahamian. Yes. I you do. do? You have a passport? I was, no, I have a birth certificate. Okay. I was born in Freeport. Yeah. Born in Freeport, and when I go there, which is rarely, they make me go in the returning resident law. Really? So that's kind of neat. Nice. Yeah. Okay, now, the uh, legend has it that Skid Row got its big opportunity from Bon Jovi. That's true. But Bon Jovi got all the money. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> 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 so how did that work out for you? I mean, not. Uh, no, but then here's what here's the honest to god truth that is that is true that we signed a publishing a deal deal with him. Then, in order for us to sign it, he would take us on his tour, and we were just a bunch of nobodies. So, let's go on tour in, our, in arenas. I mean, that doesn't happen every day. Okay, but what I thought it sounded like is that the publishing deal with Bon Jovi was uh, not a record deal. So no, like, what, you, what, what you need is a record deal. What do you need a publishing deal for? To get on tour with Bon Jovi. Uh, yeah. Like, like it, that's what it was. Because that just sounds to me like some Suge Knight holding vanilla well, ice off like, the balcony. <laughs> yeah, totally. They, they, yeah. No, but, I mean, nobody held me off the balcony, but, but <laughs> no, all I can say about it is that there were so many bands at that time, right? There were so many bands. And the ones that made it were very far and few between. Like, making it was like a unicorn. And I understand what you're saying. But here's what we did. We had a bit... I quit the fucking band. When, when, we, when I understood what we signed, I said, I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this again. So we had a big meeting with the... Um, lawyer Michael Guido who's now Jay-Z's like right hand business guy he was our lawyer then and I said I'm quitting unless we're redoing the whole thing with Bon Jovi and I get 25% of everything in the band and there's five guys in the band so that was kind of ballsy but they said okay and then our next record so we redid that we got out of that and then our next record debuted at number one on Billboard. And it didn't sell quite as many as the first, but it did very well. That's the second record. Yeah, Slave to the Ground. So you got in there and, and fixed that pretty yeah. quickly. Right. Well, How I just you? said I'm not doing it again. So yeah. So I was like, I'm out. So. It's just so glaring that you don't need a publishing deal. You need a record deal. Mm -hmm. Like a publishing deal just kind of comes with writing the music. The only, so it, was, right. it literally is the same thing. As Should Night and Vanilla Ice, except just without the balcony. Or it's like, uh, you know, who's the old one? Like like uh, Otis Redding, fucking shit. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you're right, but 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 all I can say is that. Right. Looking back, I have a great life, and I I get to play my music. I have a new record out coming very soon. My new song is on the radio and. So right like on. I mean you gotta you gotta sure, you, you gotta, gotta get dues. a break you, you gotta a, pay your dues that's, and yeah you if you have a break I mean looking back maybe it was worth it maybe it was yeah you know what maybe I mean, it he, was he put us in front of all his fans yeah and we stole a bunch of them how big were the shows that he was doing at the time oh they were that 7, was thousand no, no more no like more yeah like you know fifteen thousand like, arenas we did giant sta stadium seventy five thousand. We, oh, wow. We did, you know, yeah. it, was the new, it was the New Jersey tour. We opened every show. Wow. Okay. And I was just yeah. a baby, though. I was 19. Wow. 19 and 20. And that was the first time you started touring? Touring, touring? No, touring in arenas. I toured before that. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's in the clubs. Yeah, what, what's that jump like? What's the difference between doing going from clubs to arenas? Like, is there just a VIP feel to it? Well, I had a problem understanding exactly what you're saying, mm-hmm. and I would treat it still like I was in a club. And that ended getting me in trouble. Like, like well, how? You're... Like, I would jump in and whoop some motherfucker's ass. <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the fucking stadium? Oh, hell yeah. I would <laughs> yeah, wasn't like, it? I, 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 like, to the point of where, dude, you're not in a club band anymore. Like, you, you know, like. <laughs> now nah, the numbers are but bigger. I, I was just so young. Like, yeah. hit another Motley Crue thing. Like, one, you know. One time we got kicked off the Bon Jovi tour because I swore all the time on stage. But that was because, you know, like going to see Vince Neil in Toronto, his first thing he goes, Hey, Toronto, look at all the fucking pussy here tonight. And me and my buddies go, Wow, look at all the pussy, man. This is fucking great. And we thought it was hilarious, like that he would be talking like that. And with Ben Bon Jovi, it wasn't like, like a ma- it wasn't a mean putting down. It was just funny to me and my friend. Yeah, we thought it was funny. Also, D. Snyder was ho- the way he would chew somebody out if they weren't getting into it or whatever. It was just to me, it was like comedy and and yeah. funny and like you better get off your fucking ass and rock. Are you buddies with D. Snyder? Yeah, I love D. I love him. He's we, funny. We he's just had really, him on. Yeah, we just he's had him on. Really he's really a funny guy, man. He's really funny. He's really smart. He's really, yeah. he's really, he, you know, like he's, he's humble. Yeah. You know, like the way that he describes, like just having been, like it's such an egomaniac, so yeah. out of control, so impossible to deal with, and how like that just bit him in the ass and right. and forced him into humility. Like it's inspiring to talk to him. It is inspiring, and he's in such amazing shape for his age. Yeah, and, and uh, you know his wife Suzette, they, like that's a great team. They've been married for forty-one yeah. years. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. Love, love D. Do you like shopping on Amazon? I do. And good news is, Stevo's butt wipes for your butthole are available on Amazon. And if you want a real bundle of a deal, you can get Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole, plus Stevo's butthole destroyer, and Stevo's butt wipes for your butthole. It's the butthole bundle available on Amazon right now. Yeah, dude.